Hi, my name is Cathy Millett and this week we're adding details to the road. So it's not hard to find your own pictures of drains in the real world. I just walked out my drawer and took all of these out the front in my road that runs past my house. This one I took in Indianapolis this summer and I did spend a bit more time looking at fire hydrants and cracks and fills in pavements and manhole covers. It's great fun to find and spot things that you might want to model. So what details can you add? Well, one of the main ones I seem to have an awful lot of is fire hydrants. And I picked up this bunch of fire hydrants at a swap meet, so I have no idea whose brand they are and someone will no doubt come back and tell me. I've also got a couple of, I think these are postal um, boxes. The other road detail that I have is, these are Langley Miniatures, which is a UK company and they're um, etched brass, um, well they just drain and manhole covers. So these ones are much more American style and I'm gonna put one or two of those in just to look really good. Okay, so what's the first thing I'm gonna do? Well, I'm gonna clean up these detail parts, stick them onto a bit of cardboard with masking tape and paint them with a Halfords, which is just a bog standard car automotive primer. And I'm gonna use gray because it's the base color for most of these. Now for these, because I'm gonna paint them, I'm actually gonna leave them on the sprue, but I don't want this top, which is the bit that's showing, to be there, so I'm just going to snip out this one and then leave the other end attached, and it'll be fine for painting. Oh, that always takes a while, doesn't it? Now, um, what I'm going to do next is just paint these in colours. So I've just got a red Tamiya, bright red. I will knock it back, don't worry. It won't look like this when it's finished. Um, so give it a good shake. So the drain covers, I'm just gonna paint with a brown. Um, any old brown will do. I don't want it to be too dissimilar to my Langley's. These are my Langley ones. Okay, so parking meters. Now, these are a pain because they need a little white splodge in there. I'm actually debating whether to do it with the um, road striping pen that I have sat on the side here from doing my marking. So I've researched postal boxes and in 1955 they changed colour. I'm probably going to set my layout before then so I'm going to paint these green which is the common colour before then. Hmm, now I'm looking at the parking meters and I'm going to be honest they're probably going to be silver. They're quite hard to paint. And I'm a bit of a cheat when it comes to silver paint. Because this is quite fine, I'm going to go around the faces with a silver sharpie. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how do you make these look more like they've got a bit of relief on them. Now, there's a number of ways, and there's the set model railroad ways to plaster everything with isopropyl alcohol and um, basically black ink of some description, India ink. And this is my light one, which means it's got less ink per amount of isopropyl alcohol. And it's as simple as you just put it on and let it run into all the gaps. Now, I can actually see that this is pulling off this Tamiya. Um, so it's actually beginning to pull the paint off Oops. and make it tacky. So that's always the danger with isopropyl alcohol. It's a very potent um, solvent in its own right and it will pull a lot of things back off. So I have used it less and less nowadays. I tend to use MIG washes. Um, I've got a couple here, dark and neutral. I've got to say I like the neutral best because well, it's easy to use. It's a sort of mid mud colour. You can see the colour there. So I'm going to use them on here as a sort of a little bit just to knock them back. They're looking a little shiny at the top. If this doesn't work, then they're getting a coat of dull coat because this was a shiny red and I probably should have used the flat red. But if I put this on, you can see it just sits into the crevices where dirt might sit. And that's just very simply what you need on any detail. Now these are enamel, so over acrylic, they never lift the acrylic off. They're um, a different solvent, so they're very useful. The other thing you can watch 
use is, um, well, this is basically a dark one and I'm gonna use it on these slightly lighter um, manhole covers because I want them to be a little bit darker than they are. And you can see it just sits very nicely into all the gaps and brings out that detail really well. So I'm just gonna add that onto all of these and not overdo it, but make sure that it's, it's all there. There we go. So I've got everything done apart from these. Now, I don't know what solvent Sharpies are. I'm not a huge fan, if I'm honest, of putting a lot of um, weathering on a um, something like this, but you do need to draw out the details. So what I'm gonna do is very simply take a little bit of pigment. This is actually the pigment I used on the road. It's all dried up now. And I'm just gonna add a bit of water to it, which I'm gonna put in from here. Watch this end in tears. There we go. And it's just pigment, so it will easily re-suspend itself, I guess the word is, in water. You can see it's not gonna sit very much on here and you just want enough to stop these looking ultra shiny. So there we go, three different techniques for adding some weathering or some depth to your details. So the firehinders were still looking incredibly glossy and they don't do that in real life. So I've just given them a quick coat of dull coat just to dull them down a bit and hopefully that will help. So these items that are gonna be metal based really, they're all drain covers, they don't really look very metally at the moment. So I'm gonna get my secret weapon out. And there's a number of these. This is a AK Interactive MIG, Ammo by MIG. They all do exactly the same. This is dark steel. And if you look at it, it's a, it's sort of dark looking powder, but it's got a bit of a gloss to it. So you really need your finger for this. And you just literally rub it on. And I'll demonstrate on this one. And when you rub it on, it just gives it a bit of a shine. And, this is, and it does it on the higher parts. You probably can't see this. I'll try and capture it in the final photos. But trust me, it does work. So there we are, a little bit of subtle of metalling to this it just brings it to life a little bit gives it that extra layer so first up i'm going to put on the fire hydrants and i'm just going to pick one i'm going to use tacky glue probably not the best thing for white metal but it's either that or cyanoacrylate and the good news with this is um you can always get it up again later with a bit of water so very simple you don't want too much i'm going to dab it in and then make sure that it's not really there and i'm just going to Line it up and put it in place. Don't need to go about that. There we go. So I'm going to put the post box over here on this section. I'm not going to put it too far back. Parking meters. Now, these need a 130 tooth, it actually tells you on the back of the packet. Um, they need a 130 tooth inch mounting drill, which is 0.8. So, three and five sixteenths, so that's four sixteenths, so that's about there. So I'm gonna start at that end. Okay, so that's the holes, and I'm just gonna drill them. Um, you can mount this in all sorts of things, but I tend to just drill by, get that out of the way, drill by hand, so that's my first one. So to plant them, you need a really small, and if you put too much in, it'll just come back off again small blob of this. Quick moment of Googling, just to show that they're that way around. So I have got my um, pigment mix. And I'm just gonna put a little drop on the bottom of each of these just to take away any um, sort of whiteness. The next thing then is to add in my manhole covers. Now, one of the beauties of using foam is it's very easy to inset things in. Bear in mind, manhole covers are not proud. They sit in the surface. I'm gonna put one in the middle about here as if they, um, they redid it. And they put this in after did the white lines. So on here, to get it to set, I need to push incredibly hard. And you can see if I do that, that it's beginning 
to um, set in. So once you've got that nice little round, you can see that, that little round dent, you just need, yet again, a little bit of glue. Now, it's quite common for the manhole covers not to have lines on if you look at them. So just make sure it's well pressed in. I'm gonna do another one over here, I think, probably where this little patch is. So for that, I'm gonna do one of the um, Langley ones, which are brass here and push again to get it in flat. There we go. In now, in with the tarmac. And then along the edges, what I'm gonna do is use these British ones. Well, they've got a job lot across the pond. Now, normally what I would do when I'm putting these in is I would get my black paint, rubber black, that will do, and I would push them down, work out where it is, and then paint underneath black. And the reason for that is they're dark. I want to put a little bit of litter and gunk along the edges. And I think they just gather along the edges of the pavement. Use a cocktail stick to put it along the edge. Right, I'm not going to do a huge section because it will dry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my chamomile tea leaves. And I'm actually just going to sprinkle a pile on here. I'm going to sprinkle them all the way along. When it goes into a tunnel, it's going to have less detritus. And my litter. Where did I put that? Oh, over here. So this is um, litter that I made years ago. And it's basically sweetie wrappers or crisp wrappers. And I've just cut it up. If I get a hand float out and then put the bigger bits back, what you're left with is some just sort of things that catch your eye. And I don't necessarily want a lot, but I'm just going to put them along here and they can go in. So now what you need is a brush, which is um, here. And you just flick them into this um, mess of white glue. So I'm just going to leave this to let the glue dry, basically, and just let everything set up a bit. And then I will go and hoover it off. So here we are, the final result. So you can see my road details along here. A little bit of gunking at the edges. In some places I put pigment, such as along here. And it's a little bit more subtle. Um, other places I've put kind of more thick amounts. If you've got some fine leaves or anything fine, even a little bit of... Um, ground earth foam from um, Wood and Scenic, something like that, you can use it along the edges. It's really down to what you want. In this week's adventures of the mini Cathy's, Ensgale Cathy finds her presence. I want to get in! 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 Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Look! She brought me some prezzies back from the States. There's some Ensgale cars! <gasps> into those packets. Time will tell. And let's hope that Enscale Cathy doesn't go joyriding next week. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode on how to add details to your road. Tune in next week when we're adding the road markings. If you're enjoying it, then subscribe to me on YouTube. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Cathy Millet Modelling, on my website, kathymillett.co.uk. See you next week.